All right, that's the legal fallout. Now to the political one. Here's Wolf Blitzer of CNN describing yesterday's testimony. Fallout from the most damning and alarming testimony yet. Possible criminal consequences for former President Trump. All right, we kind of know how Wolf feels that this will change things, change votes, et cetera. Eric Erickson's here, host of The Eric Erickson Show, writer of Confessions of a Political Junkie. So is Lauren Wright, associate research scholar and lecturer in politics and public affairs at Princeton uh, University. Thank you both. Lauren, first to you. Uh, have we started to see in the polling this changing the hearts and minds of Republicans? I mean, marginally, but that's been happening for a very long time. I mean, Trump has lost his star long ago. He lost re-election. He was impeached twice. And, you know, steadily the opinion has been falling of him when he uh, before January 6th, it was about 90% among Republicans. After January 6th, it was about 80%. Now we're seeing with Ron DeSantis and alternative surging, he has about 60 to 70% support. But, you know, there's, of course, a certain sliver of Trump voters that will be with him no matter what. Right, yeah, there's yeah. floor effects in presidential polling. But we don't know whether this has been happening for a long time or it's all of a sudden. And my guess is that it's not all of a sudden. Uh, yeah, Donald Trump once said that he could shoot somebody in Fifth Avenue and not lose a single vote, which he was on to something, at least with his core supporters. Uh, Eric, to you, I'm, I'm wondering how the Republican intelligentsia and brain trust is watching this. Are they in a weird way rooting for the January 6th hearings to truly once and for all destroy Donald Trump? I kind of think behind the scenes, a lot of them are. They're ready to move on. They don't want to keep relitigating 2020. And they know if Trump is the nominee in 2024, they'll be relitigating all of this. They're, they want to move forward. So, yeah, and the problem with focusing on the sensational claims of Cassidy Hutchinson yesterday is that because they focus so much on the one thing that probably did not happen, it actually helps Trump. It, it, it makes him a sympathetic person. These people are out to get him in the minds of a lot of these Republicans. Yeah, sort of the, the Republicans on on the margin. You think about, Lauren, the, the wins for Republicans over the past uh, even week and the way America has changed. And Eric and I have talked about this as well. Uh, two big religious freedom cases uh, split Republicans' ways at the Supreme Court. Uh, a big gun case concealed carry now a constitutional right. And then obviously uh, Roe getting overturned. Huge wins for Republicans. What is the desirability or willingness of Republicans, Lauren, to hold their noses and vote for Trump or a Trump-like figure because of the wins that have been delivered? Well, the issue is we will not know that until Donald Trump gives an answer as to whether he's running or not in 2024. I mean, you could argue this is the worst person to win a national election. If he steps aside, Republicans have a very, very good chance of taking back the White House in addition to taking back Congress in November. So he will divide the vote and split people. I think the issue for Republicans on the couple of issues you just talked about is, no, they're not going to alienate Republicans and reliable Republican voters. They will always support the nominee. They're certainly not going to go to the other side. But moderate voters, Republican leaners and Democratic leaners who are pivotal um, in a national election might think differently about these issues now. You know, Eric, I, I don't know if there, there's really hard evidence for this, but we've certainly seen a change in tone from even moderate, but also fairly Trumpy Republicans who were pretty anti-January 6th committee, say, last year. Now they're suddenly really quiet about everything. Is that in a way because they're, they're with Lauren that if the January 6th committee destroys Trump with moderate voters, then Republicans suddenly really get a real chance for 2024 and, and not have to deal with the Trump issue? Yeah, I mean, yes. Uh, the big winner for the January 6th committee is Ron DeSantis. I mean, he's kind of waiting in the wings. Trump's voters are looking at him as like the next best thing. And uh, if January 6th helps kind of diminish and tarnish Trump and make these people, they're never going to publicly say it, and they'll tell the pollsters they're with him. But they're all kind of looking down in Florida saying, yeah, between the two of you in Florida, we know which one we like. Well, it's not and only just in to add to what Eric it's said really quickly, you know, 
the thing about the Ron DeSantis surge and why these head-to-head -head matchups are impressive is because this is without any campaign. This is a hypothetical environment. Most people don't know who this person is. And so if you can get Trump out of the picture and see what the DeSantis message is, you would expect that support to only grow. Go to, New, go to New Hampshire real quick, Lauren. Um, who do you like for 2024? University of New Hampshire, 39% DeSantis, 37% uh, percent Trump. Uh, does this speak to what both Eric and I and you have talked about so many times, that the Republican Party loves the Trump agenda without Trump, MAGA without the crazy, Lauren? Yes, and, and I think that was, again, it, it's been demonstrated many times. I mean, if you think about it, this is uh, the president that left office with the lowest ever average presidential approval rating since Gallup has done this survey since 1938. And so if you look to your Republican field and think, who's our best shot? This is not the guy. Eric, I've, I've got about 30 seconds. I'm wondering about the Republicans who would have been sort of painted with the the Trump brush and, and banished in the Republican Party who have now come and testified before the committee, uh, everybody from Bill Barr to, to Hutchinson it, it, at a certain extent. Uh, if somebody like Pat Cipollone flips on, flips on Donald Trump, does he in a way uh, become rebaptized in the Republican Party to the non-MAGA world and suddenly become an acceptable Republican once again? Yeah, you know, behind the scenes, I actually think Cipollone never has left that. Uh, people always kind of saw him as, as one of the wise guys behind the scenes who were helping modify and, and mollify the situation. But also, if he came forward, you'd have a real issue with attorney-client and executive privilege. So I don't know that we're ever going to be able to see him. I, I, I think, given bar rules and the like, he may never be able to testify. Oh, boy, but that would be must-see TV if it happened uh, well, as well. Uh, and especially if he demanded that uh, it be done live, not on tape, as so much has been. Hey, uh, this was great. Eric, Lauren, so good to see you both. Thank you. Yeah, Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.